Hi, Annika. Hi. Thanks for taking time to chat with us. Of course. I'm currently working in the university hospital where I do research for my PhD and my background was a bachelor in biomedical sciences and then a master's in neuroscience but over the last years I became more and more interested in actually how the immune cells in the brain interact and how you can combine immunology and neuroscience because I do believe both of these fields are really fascinating and in the last decade a lot of research has happened so now I am combining those two exciting fields and studying neuroimmunology and how immune cells affect neuronal activity and how this might be affected in neurological diseases. So I'm working in the field of stem cell disease modeling and one of the breakthroughs in stem cell technology was actually the discovery that you can turn every mature cell back into a stem cell and this discovery was actually awarded the Nobel Prize in 2012 and for us this is huge, right? Because that means that we can now take in a non-invasive way from patients um, cells, bring them, them back to stem cells and then in the lab transform them into every single cell they could be. And for us neuroscientists that's amazing, right? Because the brain is very hard to access so having those human brain cells in a dish is a major advantage for our research and disease modeling. On a more personal note, last year I developed a new strategy to engineer immune cells from stem cells and neurons from stem cells and have them co-mature and co-develop together. And this enables us now to study their interaction during development. And I can't wait to dive deeper into this new model. I was working pretty hard on it, so I'm really happy it's set up now. Absolutely, yes. So what is happening in the stem cell field and research is that people are engineering and 3D printing with biomaterials and to create platforms for the cells to grow in. So you can tweak around with parameters and create different platforms to study the cell growth and proliferation rates or their general function in different environments. And it can be really customizable with the 3D printing. But on a more personal note, I've been also diving into 3D printing as a creative outlet for my work um, and use it to let my work come alive because I think especially for students, for giving lectures, but also for presentation, it's really nice to let people see the actual models we're doing, not only on the screen in 2D, but really with the whole 3D beauty printed by the 3D printers. So what you can see here is a reconstruction of the microscopy image we took here. We can use fluorescent laser microscopes to image our stem cell models. So we can actually do multiple images in a Z-stack and then by the wavelength of light that is emitted back, we can take pictures of specific antibodies we labeled before. This is an example of a picture like this. So I can use it to visualize my model and in the end I can use this image to make a reconstruction of the object because I have the Z-stack information and actually 3D print those images. And now you can see really how the immune cell in green is interacting in 3D with a neuronal network. I really enjoy the creative part of 3D printing and I almost feel like an artist sometimes. And to be honest, I think the line between science and art is very thin anyways. Yes, of course. So I do believe one of my biggest triumphs is that I have a lot of great colleagues and friends in the world of STEM. And they inspire me on a daily basis and I think this feeling of community and also feeling understood from the people around you is really important and I'm really grateful to have this community and guidance. So when I was younger I also had this challenge where I thought I have to be less girly to be a good scientist but now growing up in the world of science, I actually realized that the things I like or do outside my job, they really don't define the quality of my research. And what matters is the quality of your research. And I don't need to be less girly to be a good scientist. Something to remember is to always allow all the women around you to shine. Um, be supportive, don't judge. Act out of kindness and love. And there's no need for competition. And it's okay um, to let others shine. Well, at the same time, be proud of your accomplishments. Don't make yourself smaller than you are. There's enough room for all of us. Um, be bold. Try out new things. It does not need to be perfect from the start. So don't let 
anyone tell you what you can do, what you cannot do. Also for things that seem crazy or way too complicated at the start. In my experience, women tend to underestimate themselves and only try out things or apply for things if they feel they're already perfect. You can learn and grow into things. So trust yourself more and dive into the things that you always wanted to know more about.